Dear subscribers, uh, as some of you have requested a continuation of the series, here is a short description of the the Bumser Mark III. So, this is going to be a one take type of deal. I suppose this is meant more for the uh, oriented Bumser connoisseur. For starters, I, I did away with the wooden end plugs, because if there was ever a problem, it was always related to those wooden plugs. I suggest using POM plastic or acetal plastic, any kind, and uh, to buy it in 18mm stock. Uh, this is the blueprint for the end cap. Well, this one. And, uh, well, it needs two operations to create it. One deep hole, well, this one here, and one through-going hole here. 8.5 and, and circa 3 millimeters. It's not that important. I made this on the lathe, but it can be made uh, with a drill press. It's not that important that the hole is centered in the block. It can be off by up to maybe two or three millimeters or so. Right. I'm just going to put this here in my state-of-the-art camera stand. There we go. Maybe. Yeah. Right then. So, the point here being, this is the end block. The one from the drawing, maybe use this as a background. Why not? You would, per the earlier versions, use a bent stainless nail. And it's important that it has this, to quote someone else, focus you fuck. Well, it has this uh, cut in it, on the top. Which helps with cons consistency. Consistency? Well, what not. Well, you would thread it into the end cap. This one has been done for a few times, so it's quite easy. Slips on nicely. Until the screw. Shit, it's pretty dark here. Let's see. Well, until the screw rests maybe two millimeters from the edge here. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but yeah. The idea being that the CO2 cartridge sits slightly inside this hole so that it's centered above the puncturing pin by, uh, by nature. Well, after this, you will need a piece of rubber tube with about maybe 18 to 19 millimeters of inside diameter. Easiest way to choose a tube would be to go to a hardware store, bringing a spare cartridge, just seeing how well it fits. It doesn't need to be tight, it should probably slide through with just a bit of finger force. It's not all that important, that it's, it doesn't have to be airtight, uh, the fit. Well, after that, you would drill a hole through the hose. As you see, this plug is 20 millimeters long, so the hole should sit here maybe 25 millimeters from the, one of the edges. If you forget this hole, you have just made yourself one... Well, I don't think the pressure from the CO2 cartridge would burst uh, a hose this thick, but... Uh, well, the pressure will sit inside, and most probably what will happen is the end cap or the CO2 cartridge will fly out as from a cannon, which is not not very appropriate, to say the least. Well, this hose is just a regular, uh, what do you call it, weave reinforced hose. It can be any kind, really. I found that three quarter inch garden hose is available and, and fits quite well, but it's hard. And as it's made from PVC, it has this bend to it. As you see, this turns out pretty straight when it's left lying, or lying off the spool for one hour or so. So, well essentially any hose. Transparent PVC hose, you name it. Well, after that, we have the block here. We let the CO2 cartridge sit. It's used, as you can maybe see, it slides in only a millimeter or so, keeping it centered. I would recommend uh, setting the whole thing up like this, in one piece, and sliding it in from the end with the hole in it. Just pushing it in there, nice and gently.
There we go. Not hard at all, that. Well, shit, this hose is a bit short. Uh, I'll just cut a longer one. Ah, well, what, you know what? No, shh, fuck me. Well, I'm back. I just cut a slightly longer hose. As you can see, there's a through going hole there, and the hole's diameter is what? 5 or 6 millimeters? Not too important, but it has to be big enough to let the pressure out from the CO2 cartridge into the outer chamber. So, let's try this again. Maybe just back this out a little bit. The most important thing is that the uh, the seal here rests against the tip of the screw. Here we go. There. As you can see, the CO2 cartridge protrudes slightly. Not important, but Later, we will be putting a hose clamp here, and it's important that the hose clamp rests onto a, a flat part of the CO2 cartridge. And in this end, well, it just sits flush. Here is a piece of bicycle tube, inner tube. What do you call it? No, yeah, bicycle inner tube. Uh, I'm not sure how, they how the dimensions with these work, but it's a big one. You have to, you'll have to experiment a little bit with how uh, the kind of quality that are av is available to you and how long of a piece you need. I buy the cheapest I can find. And I find that if I buy a better kind, I actually need shorter pieces of it. But, uh, yeah, right. Anyway, slide the bicycle tube over the whole mechanism. Up here. And then we take a hose clamp. You could also do this with the previously used wire. No, you couldn't. Uh, never mind. Never mind. And tighten this down. This serves two purposes. First, it seals the inner and outer hoses from each other and creates a pressure chamber and it keeps the end plug in place. Of course, this is why you cannot do this with the old uh, wire type. This makes the unit a little bit more expensive, but my experience is that I normally pick these up anyways, and, well, hose clamps aren't all that expensive. Right, here comes a part where you will have to experiment for yourself with the length of this tube. Uh, because, as you see, in the earlier versions, the hose would be folded up like this, and the length would be, well, double the length of the, of the CO2 cartridge. In this case, this is not possible, because we need to put a second hose clamp right here, to clamp the whole thing together. So, if you have a good quality hose, perhaps you could just cut this off, flush here, and put the hose clamp right there. And the expansion and burst chamber would only need to be this section. But, my experience, and I have not tried this extensively, is that I need to put at least a bit of bicycle tube on there. So, we just uh, squish it up there. Slide a second hose clamp over the end. And perhaps here you can see, well, and then we tighten it down. This, of course, makes it pretty easy to reload the unit. A lot easier than with the wire type. And still rather cheap. And, well, this second hose clamp also has two functions. For one, it seals the pressure chamber, which is inside the bicycle hose here, and it keeps the CO2 cartridge in place, lengthwise, against the hose. And, uh, well, when we turn the screw here, uh, the tip of it will puncture the CO2 cartridge just a little bit. The bicycle hose will blow up, and after a... Well, after a certain time, normally a second or two, the tube will burst with a loud bang. I will get some hearing protection, I will test it. Well, 
that's the Bumser Mark III. I'm not sure if the microphone picks it up, but <laughs> it's loud. Uh, very safe, keeps all the parts in uh, one place. Uh, the expandable parts are very cheap. An 8 gram CO2 cartridge costs what? Uh, two Swedish crowns, with, which is 20% uh, of a US dollar, I suppose. Or, uh, not sure how the euro works, 2% of a euro. 20% of a euro, rather, Jesus. Well, to use it again, you just exchange this burst disc here. Pull this screw back just a little bit. And insert a new cartridge. Absolutely safe, foolproof. There is no risk of, well, maybe... If you would hold your finger against the CO2 cartridges and as it were, is expanding, maybe you could manage to get yourself a freeze burn. Well, just don't do that. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, it's a lot better. And as I said, buying 18 millimeters acetal stock is not rare or expensive. This can be made from all kinds of materials. Well. Anything, yeah, well, anything that you can thread a wooden nail through, so not metal. It's a big improvement to go from wood to plastic. It's always airtight, it keeps a thread easier, and it's nicer to work with. Great! Have a good one.